Hello and welcome to Beyond the Headlines. I'm Roy Counts and uh, with me is Sunil Kaushal as usual. Sunil, how are you today? Oh, very good. Thank you. Yes, yeah, still in 2.5. <laughs> Don't remind me of that, Sunil. <laughs> Every time I think of that, uh, it yeah. gets me depressed. Oh, I know. It, it, it's, I don't know how long we can be kind. And... I know. Uh, the Prime Minister keeps saying, be kind, be kind. I don't think anyone is feeling that kindness. I am not. Well, I think uh, people have had enough. And it's not only, I mean, it's, you've got to balance it, right? Yeah. There is a uh, virus out there. Yeah. You take as much as protection. But I think the rest of the country should not suffer right. because of one isolated place. I'm going to stick out my neck and say something. You may want to respond to it or not. I don't know. I have a feeling that uh, some people are trying to make this into a COVID election. They want to keep COVID front, right and center. That's what I feel. I may be biased, but you know that's how I feel. that They're keeping it front, right and center so people remember all the time, we are under COVID, we are under COVID. Because I remember when the lockdown was lifted, the first lockdown, life actually went to normal quite quickly. Mm. And within a month, you know, it was as if nothing had happened and people were going to the bars and the house prices were going up yeah. and everything yes. was fine. Yes. And I think suddenly people realized that if the fear of COVID is not there, then maybe, you know, uh, Jacinda's main raison d'etre, you know, will be lost. I think that's what I feel. I'm sorry, but, you know. Okay, well, what you've said is right. Mm. It is a COVID election because that's what the Prime Minister yeah. said. She said it is a COVID yeah. election. And <clears throat> to keep, manage people like this yeah. uh, and the outbreak, uh, it, it will be COVID election. Everything will be in front of people will be COVID. But I think it's more than COVID. It's about economy, how we are going to save jobs, how we are going to re-employ people. By 2022, the employment rates will skyrocket uh, over 20%. And uh, people at that time, you know, there'll be a lot of uh, mortgagee sales because people can't afford it. And it's just today, uh, the GDP figures came out, showed that New Zealand in recession after 11 years. So uh, officially in election, uh, a recession, I think the next GDP, because GDP quarter starts from September, um, reading a few of the bank notes um, that Reserve Bank came out with, they said that uh, they are, uh, the economy is kind of picked up. So it will be interesting to see in January, February. Yeah, let's talk about uh, the uh, results which are coming out now about the uh, shrinking in the GDP. Mm. Okay, first they said that was... Uh, going to be 16%, but I think it has come out to 12% now. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I'm quite, you know, um, I'm a bit upset, uh, you know, with one thing. Mm. Grant Robertson actually making it look mm. as if the shrinking of the 12% is a good thing. You know why? Mm. He said in May, they had predicted it is going to be 24%. Mm. Hmm. Then they said that uh, it could be 16%. Now it's, it's only 12%. It is not the 24% that we thought it was. Ridiculous. It is just like saying that 80,000 people are going to die, but only 24 have died. So we have done a great job. It's a spin doctor thing. Exactly, spin doctoring. You know, you tell the people that it will be very negative. Yeah. And then you say that, yes, it's been really good. Yeah. Uh, because of all our efforts. See, it hasn't been 24%. Yeah. So it's a, it's a good um, whoever is doing their spinning spinning is doing pretty good and 12, should be paid well. Twelve percent is massive, okay, for a small well, economy like New Zealand. Well, for, out of five thousand, yeah, twelve you know, percent is what? Yeah, sixty thousand, six hundred thousand. Yeah, you know, if you do people wise, yeah, you know, absolutely. That's quite yeah. you know, six hundred people. And to say that we actually done well because we were expecting that it would you know compact by twenty four percent, but actually it is only half of that. Mm. You know. A complete spin, you know, it, it, because remember that uh, Professor Sean Henry, you know, my yeah. pet peeve, mm. he kept saying 80,000 people will die, 80,000 people will die. You know, you would think that Sean Henry is the only epidemiologist in New Zealand. There are 7,600. For example, there is the epidemiologist uh, Simon Thornley. He is a renowned, uh, you know, doctor, wrote many books many research papers work, mm. you know, he's a professor at the University of Auckland. He says uh, all this is rubbish. Mm. 
Hmm. But no one is listening to him. He is, of course, appear on TV and he is making statements. So just the government is just listening to people who are playing by their uh, book. See, how do you control people? Mm. It put them in fear. Yeah. I mean, I'm saying generally. Yeah. Okay. That's a general thing. You yeah. you tell them if you don't do this, this will happen. Yeah. I mean, it's like kids. You tell them, you know, yeah. that um, if you don't do this, this is the consequence. Yeah. So what's the consequence of a infectious yeah. disease which yeah. is airborne, yeah. like coronavirus, is that you um, you stay in your huddle or you stay in your bubble, whatever you want to call it, don't interact much. But that's not to say, okay, if the virus goes away after 14 days or yeah. after 21 days, the only way it can come is through overseas. Right. And that's what has happened in this case. I, I, and what happened recently, I was not on top of the news. Something happened between the Director General and the Prime Minister. Yeah, so um, Ashley Boonfield said someone asked him at a Q&A about uh, with you know, you've done any research on the virus, and he says they uh, they believe uh, that it has come mm. from the border. Mm. Now, in which way from the border? Well, it has to come from the border somehow, mm. either a contact uh, with the, someone coming in who yeah. had the virus and then it got spread. Yeah. Um, and the same thing was uh, asked of the prime minister, but the prime minister said, oh, she didn't believe it was right. And then later on, uh, she did uh, kind of uh, agree mm. that, okay, it wasn't in the community, mm. but further investigation, like you say, yeah. you know, in these things. Yeah. So there's two opinions. So yeah. on the advice, the Prime Minister always says, on the advice of the Director General, we're still in lockdown, still, yeah. etc. Yeah. So on the, on the advice of the Director General, don't you think it came from overseas? Yeah. And if it came from overseas, that means that your border control hasn't been perfect. Forget about border control. Look what happens today or yesterday. One person escapes from the quarantine in mm. uh, Rotorua. Mm -hmm. Someone went walkabouts at mm. night. But I, I, I think it is time for the rest of the country to be on one. I think yeah. she will. Well, they're all going on one on Monday night. And uh, what I again found disconcerting is uh, the Herald article, front page article with uh, uh, Dr. Ashley Bloomfield, uh, where he says that, uh, you know, probably masks will become common now, permanently. You know, that will become a part of life. Uh, basically, you know, I, I felt that entire article on front page of Herald was uh, quite of a sort of putting fear, saying that the pandemic is now not going to leave us and we are going to live with the pandemic. I, I understand, see, I am the first person to say that the virus is a dangerous one, mm. uh, that it can kill people you know, with comorbidities and, you know, with it's not that it goes, it's not like a virus which has got a 90% death mm. rate. It has mm. got uh, about, I think, 3%, you know, and especially older people. I understand all of that. But uh, the kind of fear psychosis which, you know, has been put on us, I think you manage it the way you manage it. You, you know, the buck stops with you. But putting this fear coming on TV every day at one, talking about the virus, talking about the virus, talking about the mask, you know, and then this uh, people like Sean Henry and Michael Baker, you know, coming on TV every day saying, keep the lockdown, keep the lockdown. This is going to be devastating. This is going to be devastating. You know, you actually, even if you don't believe it, you start believing it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, that, that's how you you keep reinforcing the yeah. message and yeah. people believe it. That's right. It's like, you know, you, you tell lies or you keep telling lies and yeah. soon it will become truth. Right. I'm sure uh, quite a, uh, you know, many of our viewers who are watching this may not agree with us. And some of you may be actually getting a bit uh, agitated thinking that, you know, we are talking about some conspiracy theories. We are not. We're just giving a contrary view. Hmm. You know, hmm. there is a view in the world and we're just, or rather in New Zealand, and we are trying to give a view which yeah. is a different view. Yeah, you know, I mean, to make you think. Hmm, there's both sides of the story. Absolutely. And they both are, both come from epidemiologists. Right. You know, one believes in it, one doesn't believe in it. And there's nothing to do with Jacinda or Labour. No, if no. National was in power, or if, you know, thing. it would be the same thing. If they have been doing it, we would have said the same yeah, thing. It's not about the government. Yeah. It's about the why the different medical, uh, you know, I mean, it's like, you know, you have a something in your wrist yeah. or in your leg. Yeah. You always want a second opinion. That's right, yeah. It's about a second opinion. Exactly, exactly. Just a second opinion as to whether we should be in lockdown because mm. 
from what we see in the economy with uh, grant robertson saying that uh, there will be 100000 job losses now he is predicting a fall in the real estate you know mm. industry and then saying that uh, two years later it will come up you know uh, and everyone knows none no economic predictions are ever you know true uh, but all this, uh, you know, smacks of fierce psychosis. Yes, it, it is. And I think uh, people, it also kind of, in, in you know, fringes on the freedom of thought, freedom of speech, yeah. freedom of uh, doing things. Uh, yeah, I think uh, what, uh, what, what really, what, I mean, COVID, no COVID, what I want to really see is how both the parties are coming out Right. With getting us back onto our feet. Right. So uh, they have been making some announcements over the last few days. Uh, I don't think uh, there are any very big ticket announcements. Um, National said that, uh, sorry, uh, Labour said that they are going to feed uh, all school children lunch, which is a good thing because, you know, many school, many children are from very poor families and they don't get a square meal. So that's a good thing, mm. you know, a very socialist thing. And National says that they will give them uh, toothbrush and you know, uh, yeah, so they eat their food and they brush their teeth. That's what David Seymour said that labor feeds them and national brushes their teeth. <laughs> so, yeah, brush. I, I think uh, the it is a really good thing about uh, teaching people how to brush mm -hmm. or kids how to yeah, brush. Yeah, their teeth. Yeah. I think that's a very good yeah, because yeah. dental is quite expensive, yeah, very expensive. Yeah, yeah. And one thing good they do in New Zealand is dental is free for kids. Yeah, it's. Uh, but I think uh, national things about uh, kids, uh, dental, it's very good. Yeah. I know Helen Clark was lobbying yeah, the government yeah, for yeah. doing it. It could be national yeah. stalled. Yeah. 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 In fact, a lot of uh, national's policies are, you know, I, I think some people are right when they say that national is likely now leaning towards the left because, you know, but I think, I think some of the policies, especially the, the thousand day policy for young mothers or rather for young parents, Really good. I think it's not yeah. left or right. I think it's more yeah. about human. Humanity. Human, yeah, yeah. You know, the touch. I mean, one thing good is that they're not giving them cash. That's right. So they're saying there's these services. Yeah. You go up yeah. to $3,000. You go. Yeah. We will pay for it. It's and like a voucher kind of thing. Yeah. yeah so yeah. it's not yeah. it's not giving yeah. money that right. you go and buy cigarettes or That's buy right. something else yeah. uh, that you don't need yeah. when you should be spending it on certain services. Yeah. Well, talking about spending, you know, while both uh, Labour and National are trying to compete with each other, you know, giving out uh, freebies, to, so to say, or rather, you know, as you rightly put it, showing the more human face yeah. of government. Uh, the person coming out, you know, squeaky clean and shining from all this is David Seema. Yeah, okay. look, I think he, David's he's, built a good, uh, yeah. a good mana over the years. Yeah, yeah. He's been um, singing the right thing, a one-man band. Yeah. He's been um, talking the right thing with uh, euthanasia. Right. I think euthanasia, yeah. it was very privileged that his bill came out yeah, and yeah. it um, was a conscience vote. Yeah. I think, and also around the firearm policy, right. especially after 15th of March. Yeah. So he's gained good mana and now with uh, like when Roger Douglas was there and uh, you know uh, other guys before after Richard Preble, Preble, yeah. Richard Preble yeah. etc their tax yeah. policy was really good yeah but uh, they're, they're kind of like an offshoot between New Zealand First and yeah. National Party yeah. so what you'll see in this election is probably um, at picking up the votes from New Zealand First right <clears throat> and that's what uh, today's Herald says that uh, you know David Seymour probably may get into parliament with, uh, I don't know, five, six maybe MPs. Yes, yeah, uh, it, could, yeah. it could be the rise of um, ACT. As, uh, I uh, mean, remember before 2011, ACT actually had nine yes, uh, people did. in parliament. Yeah, yeah. So there was not a party to, you know, uh, it's, a, it's a party to watch rather. That's what it I is meant, a yeah. party to watch. And yeah. I think um, way back someone had suggested to... Uh, Judith Collins yeah, yeah. to be the leader of ACT yeah. and become the Prime Minister that right, way. Right. <laughs> Didn't happen. Yeah. But I think uh, we will see ACT coming up with a good number of MPs. New Zealand First just came out. They're always the last one to come out with a list of um, uh, their their list, um, which has come out. Um, Winston Peters has been doing his um, roadshow across the In country, country yeah. which... If you see, 
don't know if the guys from UK suggested it yeah, to yeah, him or not. Yeah, yeah. But it, it has really picked up momentum mm, in the media. Mm -hmm. Like uh, Katie Bradford has been following him yeah, yeah. all around the country. He's been going into the malls and going, he's come back. In, in South Island, his uh, mannerism was very different. Yeah. As soon as he came up um, north, North has, you know, he's back to his old yeah, Winston old Winston, style yeah, yeah. of telling people to, mm. you know, go take a hike. Yeah, yeah, you're right. In fact, in uh, South Island, he was not as competitive as he is. No, yeah. no. But I think, uh, given it's a blue land, yeah. uh, and also David Seymour's, um, uh, you know, has done really good uh, uh, campaign down south. Uh, but it's now coming to the last five weeks yeah. um, in leaders' debate on Tuesday. Right. And I believe the um, first of the many polls will also come out on that night. So it's all going to start heating up next yeah. week. And, I, and that's why uh, the Prime Minister has... Uh, Make sure that she announces. Yeah, on Monday. And talking about the minor parties, uh, Advanced New Zealand, Bilite Kahika's mm. minor Advanced New Zealand party, and uh, the New Conservatives. You know, on social media, they're doing quite well. You know, they are actually outstripped everyone else. Yes, I think. See, they, it, it's you like it or not, it is going to be a. From now on, mm. it's going to be a social media kind of a thing, yeah, yeah. because what COVID has done is it's uh, pro uh, it's uh, prohibited people from gathering together. Yeah. So where can you meet? Where can you do? It's all online. Mm. So they have really tapped into a good uh, knowledge base of um, using the money wisely rather right. than pitching up uh, 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 pitching up posters across the country. Right. Why not use it through social media? Talking about knowledge base, uh, that reminds me the news a couple of days ago of uh, Chinese interference, mm. or rather, you know, not Chinese interference, but China building a database on our politicians mm. and on prominent people and, you know, even uh, common people, professors mm. and... Including you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, they, know, they know all about you. Yes, I mean, I mean, it just goes to show. It just goes to show that nothing is, nothing is safe. And in fact, uh, Sunil, I think they have you on their database. No, 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 you're no. a political analyst. No, 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 and no, no, you, no. you are an influencer. <laughs> they don't. They don't have me. So, but uh, the funny thing is, what they did was uh, in the database, they actually took information which is out there. You know, stuff yeah. which you put in Facebook, and you know? so you may put something like, "I went to the doctors today." So they they flag that, or you say something about. Uh, ailment or you know mm -hmm. and what they do is uh, what the article said and they had information on Winston Peters daughter yeah. on a prime minister's sister mm -hmm. on uh, someone else's uh, mother yeah. and uh, on John Key's son, son. and uh, this is because that data was leaked and some uh, American American, officer, uh, American he, yeah, and he only got 10% of yes. it and he had to put it together yeah and uh, they also found, uh, what's her name, that Brady... Uh, uh, Anne Marie Brady. Anne Marie Brady, who is a professor. Yeah. And she was the first person to actually, uh, or may not be the first person, but she is the most vocal about Chinese interference in uh, New Zealand. And you know that her house was broken yeah, into. Yeah, yeah, and, you know, it looked like a burglary, but it's very clear it was some secret service, you know, maybe Chinese secret service who came in and broke in and took her computers and all of that. That's right. And including the two people who were going to speak yeah. against the Chinese government when they were going to parliament, they died in a car crash. We hope it is coincidental, mm. you know, um, and not engineered. But that's how dangerous it is becoming. Now. Well, it is. I mean, the thing is, obviously, that means our spy agencies are not doing well. And this is one one of those things that uh, how can these agencies ha get data on your site? Right. You know, is that because we are using Chinese made phones or yeah. Chinese phones? Yeah. I, I, <laughs> India has banned all Chinese phones and Chinese uh, telecom products. America has done the same. A lot of European countries are doing it. So probably uh, there is some. You well, Spark provides most of the Huawei <laughs> pro <laughs> broadband. <laughs> Telling the Chinese, come on, come in. <laughs> well, how how uh, how easy is it to hack? Yeah. yeah. Uh, if if you if you are, a, well, you know. Yeah. See, Australia is smart. You know, Australia, Japan, uh, India, and the United States. They got into what's known as a quad, mm, the mm, four. You know, yeah. and they are. If you see the map, they are encircling. Correct. You know, so there's Japan here, yeah. there's America here, mm. India here. Mm. You know, and Australia down. So mm. they've encircled China, and they've made a quad, and now they're having. 
you know joint uh, naval exercises naval and exercise. they are meeting uh, i think the quad is having a meeting soon mm. you know so they are quite uh, you know up to the fact that uh, the chinese have got such expansionist yes. kind of you know motives but mm. i don't think people in new zealand understand that no i think we kiwis are a little bit uh, laid back laid laid back because it's yeah. it's nothing see we don't we don't have enemies yeah yeah it's it's not like you were fighting with the neighbor so yeah. your neighbors across the ditch three yeah, hours yeah, by yeah, flight yeah. you know and your way you fight them is on the paddock yeah in in cricket or in rugby yeah, or in league yeah, and yeah. sports you know it's it's like the cousin said we don't have anyone close by yeah. that we need to worry about so yeah. if you are an average kv you wouldn't we would bother about such thing yeah. but but it would scare you to yeah, know yeah. that something like this is happening, happening. Yeah. and then there becomes a anti chinese sentiment yeah yeah i mean there's so many chinese in new zealand it's not yeah. their fault yeah, absolutely not their fault and that i think that's one thing that people have to yeah, be wary of it is not the chinese living in yeah, new a, zealand yeah, it's, you know, some, it's the chinese government especially the C, uh, communist party communist yeah, party yeah we're talking about them we're not talking about the chinese on the street all of them most of them very good people they yeah, yeah they're excellent people yeah. they work hard they yeah. you know they contribute to the uh, local yeah. economy and to the community yeah. it's it's the people the government yeah. that is in china yeah. that uh, is yeah, doing that, all yeah. this thing well sunil uh, last week we had this um, uh, segment on sushant singh rajput mm-hmm. and that uh, actually hit you know touched a chord mm. because uh, as you know our last week show was the highest rated show yeah. you know ever since we started this show yeah. and it, uh, it 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 went worldwide mm. Uh, so what we decided was uh, some people wrote in and asked us uh, you know because they are not familiar a lot of non indians watch our show yeah. so they are not very familiar with who is sushant singh rajput what happened yeah. so what i did earlier before we started shooting this segment i actually shot a short segment to give people a low down on uh, what actually happened yeah. and we'll play this uh, now yeah. and we'll come back once it is done last week's show had a segment on the sushant singh rajput case and our show actually garnered a huge response from the viewers but many of you actually wanted to know what the case was all about so this is a very brief lowdown on what exactly happened in the sushant singh rajput case so let's begin with sushant singh rajput now he was an upcoming actor uh he was not yet a a lister but he would have actually been a a lister in the next few years he got his break actually in uh, television uh, acting in serials and from there he went on to the movies he was a boy from a small town in india known as patna which is in the state of bihar sushant singh rajput was a very bright young boy uh, extremely intelligent and he had an interest in astronomy and the sciences people say that had he not become an actor he would have gone on to become a scientist anyway he acted in the movies uh, like uh, ms dhoni the biopic on the cricketer which actually gave him a huge following what happened was on the 8th of uh, june an incident took place in mumbai his manager a girl by the name of disha salian disha committed suicide or that's what is the current understanding that she jumped off a 12 story building and she died and there are a lot of theories why she did that some people said that it was because you know she broke up with her fiance other said that she was on drugs a lot of rumors were happening about a week later the nation was shocked to learn that sushant singh rajput the upcoming actor was found dead in his house the apparent case being suicide now no suicide note was found on him and what is very interesting is within a day of uh, the police finding his body the home minister of the state of maharashtra guy by the name of anil deshmukh he claims that sushant committed suicide because of clinical depression now remember the investigations have not yet started uh, the police are just making preliminary inquiries and the here the home minister comes and says that uh, this is a case of depression and so this actor committed suicide now in normal cases the home minister will never come and make a statement like that to the press now when this happened the very well known actress kangana ranawat who is probably the highest paid actress in bollywood today she comes out and says that this just cannot be a suicide in fact she suspects something fishy so 
over the next uh, three or four weeks, uh, it kept going on. Uh, some people said that he probably committed suicide because he was hounded out of the industry. He was too smart for the other actors who were very dumb, so they pushed him out. And all this was happening. But a month later, on the 28th of July, about five weeks after Sushant's death, Sushant's father, K.K. Singh, files a case in Patna. Remember, Sushant was found dead in Mumbai, in the state of Maharashtra. This is another state in Patna. Father files a case to say that he suspects that Sushant's girlfriend, Riya Chakravarti, abetted his suicide or was in some way involved in his death. And he makes the startling disclosure that she has stolen money from Sushant. And it is not just a few rupees. It's crores of rupees disappeared from Sushant's account and went into Riya's account. And as the investigation unfolded, it, it was found out that uh, Riya had sacked all of Sushant's staff, got her own people there. She had changed the names of uh, all the companies to her own name. And she had transferred all the assets that Sushant had to her and her brother's and her family's name. So when this happened, the Mumbai police uh, kept saying that it was suicide. However, people wanted a probe. So the Bihar government got involved in this and the Bihar government started saying that there should be a CBI probe. A CBI being the Central Bureau of Investigation. For those who don't know, that's the federal police of India, just like the FBI. So they asked for a CBI probe into this case because then uh, there would be no interference from the local police. And uh, while this is going on, Republic TV and Times Now, two of the biggest channels in India, they start doing their own investigations and they find out that there is much more to the story than what was told to the public. So they uncovered things like, you know, there were two ambulances, the rumors that there were two bodies in the house that, uh, in the room that Sushant was found dead. And then they uh, discover a huge number of discrepancies. Now, while this is happening, Riya Chakravarti starts her PR campaign, trying to, you know, make herself look very good in the eyes of the public. And interestingly, the chief minister of Maharashtra, a person by the name of Uddhav Thakre, he says that this case should not be politicized. And again, his home minister Anil Deshmukh says that he is against the case going to the CBI. Now, this starts ringing a bell. Why is the government of Maharashtra and why is the police against a federal investigation into this case? So as things unravel, it, uh, they find out that probably the chief minister's son was involved or rather he was present when Disha Salyan, the first person who committed suicide, when she was found dead, in that same building or maybe in the same apartment, he was attending a party. Now, we do not know whether he's involved. We do not know how far he's involved. But the rumor started making the rounds that Aditya Thakre, who is a minister in his own father's government, he's a cabinet minister in his father's government, Aditya Thakre was involved in, uh, in some way. And as the thing started unraveling, it uh, the Central Bureau of Investigation found out that there were so many layers to this mystery. Now, while they were investigating, the Narcotics Control Bureau also got involved because when Sushant's father made that case against Rhea, he said that money was stolen. So because there was a big amount involved, they got the Enforcement Directorate involved. Enforcement Directorate is again a central agency which looks into uh, uh, into issues that deal with fraud and uh, financial transactions. So Enforcement Directorate actually, while they were doing their investigations, they found some deleted WhatsApp messages from where they gleaned that Rhea Chakravarti was part of a drug ring, a drug supply ring, and that she and uh, many of the Bollywood actors were part of this drug ring. So they handed over this case the, to the Narcotics Control Bureau because the ED, Enforcement Directorate, only deals with financial transactions. Narcotics Control Bureau did their investigations and they found that Rhea was involved. They got a confession from her and then finally she was arrested. Now the CBI also was probing the case from the angle of homicide. And apparently the CBI has come to the conclusion just today or tomorrow they may release their final report where they will say that uh, Sushant Singh Rajput was actually murdered and uh, it wasn't a case of suicide. So, in, so what is the story actually? What really happened? Well, 
Kangana Ranawat, who was the first person to come out and say it was not a suicide, uh, she became very vocal and she went on TV and she kept saying that, you know, uh, Sushant was murdered. The Maharashtra government decided to take revenge on her. Kangana Ranawat had built a building where, uh, which was a production house as well as a residence. And she had inaugurated it just a few months ago in, this, in January. Brand new building. The Maharashtra government used the Bombay Municipal Corporation, or rather the Mumbai Municipal Corporation, to file a case against her, saying that she had made some illegal construction, which Kangana refutes and says that there's nothing illegal in her construction. And even before her lawyers could go to court, they sent in diggers and demolished a part of the building. And they demolished it very badly. They even de demolished the building inside and outside. They, they broke... Uh, computers, uh, furniture, everything, just because she was vocal against the Maharashtra government. So this is how bad the government of Maharashtra has become. They are going and destroying property for anyone who is speaking against them. Now, the interesting thing is in the entire case, not one Besides Kangana Ranawat and maybe one or two of the smaller actors, not one of the big A-list stars said a word. They have just kept mum. When other events happen, they are the first to make statements and hold placards and hold candlelight vigils. But in this case, they did not say a word. They all kept mum. All these Nasiruddin Shahs and Shahrukh Khans and the Salman Khans and the Amitabh Bachans and the Akshay Kumars and all of them have just kept mum and have not said anything because there's a lot of murk involved here. So there's a case of dirty money, then there's a case of drugs and recently a video is making the rounds which showed Karan Johar, one of the top directors and producers in Bollywood, uh, it showed many of the top actors having a party in his house and apparently uh, some of them were doing drugs. So that, that has actually, when that a video came out last year, uh, MLA, which is a member of the Legislative Assembly of Punjab, he actually asked the Mumbai police to investigate, but to date, the Mumbai police have done nothing. So there is all these things happening, the murky world of Bollywood, where there is a casting couch and there is, you know, a very loose kind of bohemian kind of lifestyle which they follow. Now what they don't want is anything to happen to that lifestyle, so they have all kept quiet. Now, if they had kept quiet, that would have been okay. But what has now happened is they have started opposing Sushant Singh Rajput and supporting Riyab because they know that they will be in trouble if they open their mouths. So, what happened was just yesterday in Parliament, in the Indian Parliament, uh, Amitabh Bachchan's wife, Jaya Bachchan, who is a member of the upper house of the, of, of the Indian Parliament, she made a statement saying that jo thali mein khate hai, usi thali mein chhed karte hai, which means that you are being untrue to your own profession. She said that this Bollywood, she just eulogized Bollywood saying that they pay the most taxes, they employ so many people and all of that. And she said that we should not be talking against Bollywood. What a hypocrite. Jaya Bachchan, you are such a hypocrite. Your husband was caught in the Panama Papers scandal. He is known to be involved in financial irregularities. Your daughter-in-law is involved in financial irregularities. And what about uh, others like uh, Salman Khan, who has so many acquisitions against him? He was involved in a poaching case. He was involved in a hit and run where he was driving the car, but he uh, did not admit it. And so hence, he, uh, the, they put the case on someone else. Some poor sap got caught in the case while Salman was free. So this is the kind of muck that actually is happening in Bollywood. And unfortunately, we are the people who support them because every time a movie is released, we pay $18 and $20 and we go and watch their movies. Now, these are the people who have absolutely no morals. They have got no love for anything except for themselves. And we, the viewers, are the ones who eulogize them. Now, in this Sushant Singh Rajput case, no one is looking at the fact that here was a young guy who was murdered. Because that's what the CBI is saying now, that he was murdered because of a something very murky which happened. Apparently, Sushant Singh Rajput stumbled on a pedophile ring, which was operating in Bollywood. 
Uh, just like if you remember what happened in the US with Jeffrey Epstein and uh, Prince Andrew, a similar case, he stumbled upon a pedophile ring where Disa Shalin was the witness. She saw this 15-year-old girl being exploited by some of the top Bollywood stars. She told Sushant, Sushant was going to do a press conference to reveal this pedophile case when he was done to death. Now, remember, besides Disha Salyan and Sushant, 10 other people close to Sushant have been found dead in the last one month. Let that sink in. 10 other people besides Sushant and Disha who are close to Sushant were found dead in mysterious circumstances in the last one month. This is how murky this case is. And this is murky because the top people in India, especially in the Maharashtra government, including the chief minister, are somehow involved in this. Because you can see from their demeanor, you can see from the way they are trying to scuttle the probe that Uddhav Thakre, his home minister Anil Deshmukh, Sharad Pawar, his coalition partner, and Uddhav's son, Aditya Thakre are all involved in some way or the other. So that, friends, is the Sushant Singh Rajput case in a nutshell. I hope you have, to, you have now got an understanding of the case. And we are going to actually talk more about this case in the next few weeks until it comes to its conclusion. I really, you know, I'm thinking that I should stop watching movies and Netflix and all that. Rather do something more creative, you know, or mm. do something more fulfilling. Mm. You know, instead of vegetating in front of Netflix. Yeah. <laughs> Go plant some trees. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we need some more trees. Right. I think it's also time for us to say uh, goodbye. So we'll see you again next Friday. Yes, we will see you and hopefully it'll be level one. Yeah. Uh, you have been saying it for the last three weeks now, level one, level one. I hope this time you're right.